glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. I hear things are just as bad up in Lake Erie. They wrote to Dr. Seuss and suggested that it was no longer appropriate to have the line in there about, I hear things are just as bad up in Lake Erie. Well, nobody ever really thought this was gonna go anywhere, but it was worth a try. And we had always tried to teach the teachers and everybody we worked with to think about what one person can do. How can one person be an agent of change? So these two young women, one master student, one PhD student, working with me and Dr. Meyer, wrote their letter to Dr. Seuss with great expectations. Nothing happened. Months and months and months went by with nothing happening. Probably nine months after the letter, the, um, the gentleman himself wrote back to us. On Dr. Seuss' letterhead, written from La Jolla, California, on January 27, 1986, Dear Claudia Malier and Margie Pless, you must think me terribly rude for not answering your very pleasant letter of December 6th. The fault, however, is not mine. It just arrived this morning, having been somewhat circuitously forwarded from New York by a Pony Express. Although I will be unable to accept your kind invitation to come to Cleveland, I do agree with you that my 1971 statement in the Lorax about the condition of Lake Erie needs a bit of revision. I should no longer be saying bad things about a body of water that is now, due to the great civic and scientific effort, the happy home of smiling fish. I can assure you the process of purifying my text will commence immediately. Unfortunately, the purification of texts, like that of lakes, cannot be accomplished overnight. The objectionable line will be removed from future editions, but it could possibly take more than a year before the existing stock of books has moved out of the bookstores. In the meantime, thank you for your letter and for all the great Loraxian work you have been doing. Dr. Seuss, Theodore S. Geisel. It was so gratifying to these young women and such a source of pride for the Ohio Sea Grant Education Program. Every time Dr. Seuss's birthday comes around, every time we have Earth Day, there are people that want to know more about this story. It's a great success story about how one person can make a difference. The page now reads, you're glumping the pond where the hummingfish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And it ends there without a reference to Lake Erie. A most gratifying alteration of the book.